February is American Heart Month, a time for everyone to focus on their cardiovascular health. But doctors now recognize women's risk for heart disease increases significantly at menopause. In fact, heart disease is the number one killer of women, causing one in three deaths each year. And more women die from heart disease than all other forms of cancer combined. Dr. Nidhi Kumar is on call this morning with important information for women to protect their health. Good morning, Dr. Kumar. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. What is it about menopause that makes women so vulnerable? So estrogen is incredibly protective on the heart and the blood vessels. And when we go through menopause, our estrogen level doesn't gradually decline. It falls off of a cliff. And so our cardiovascular risk really takes off. We see metabolic changes increases in glucose, weight gain around the abdomen, increases in cholesterol. We see mood changes, difficulties with sleep. And then also we start to build plaque more rapidly. And then you add on those hot flashes that make sleep and mood more difficult. These changes can last seven to eight years and they're the perfect storm for having a cardiac event. All right, so what should women do to stay heart healthy during that time? Okay, so if there is ever a time in life to really examine life style and optimize health it is now so smoking cessation is paramount exercise at least 150 minutes a week diet low salt low carbohydrate and more protein 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 if you leverage protein you will really cut back on your carbohydrates and your late night cravings and counteract some of those metabolic changes um, and then finally optimize your numbers know your numbers you want to shoot for a BMI less than 25 blood pressure less than 120 over 80 glucose and LDL cholesterol less than 100 can I ask you about aspirin because we hear so much conflicting information about that okay for the overwhelming majority of people who do not have cardiovascular disease aspirin is a no aspirin does not re uh, reduce your risk of stroke it doesn't reduce your risk of death it has a moderate reduction in the risk of heart attack, but that's countered by an increased risk of bleeding. So for people that don't have cardiovascular disease, the benefits don't outweigh the risk. Now, if you do have cardiovascular disease, meaning you've had a stroke, a heart attack, a stent, bypass surgery, or known vascular disease, then aspirin is a yes. Another controversial topic is hormone replacement. Where do you stand on that? This is one of the most polarizing topics, I think, in all of medicine. For some women, carefully selected group of women, hormone replacement therapy can reduce your cardiovascular risk, but patient selection and timing are very important. Hormone replacement therapy should be initiated early in menopause and shows the greatest benefit for women that go into early menopause. So the great fear with hormone replacement therapy came from a study in 2002, which suggested that there was an increase in breast cancer and heart attack with hormone replacement therapy, like scary stuff. And, but then subsequently, that data was reanalyzed and they found that the breast cancer risk was not necessarily statistically significant. And the heart attack risk was not fair because the patients in the study were older, many of them smoked, were obese and had hypertension. Now, two things you can't dispute. Hormone replacement therapy increases gallstones and can cause venous thromboembolism. That's clots in the legs, clots in the lung. Uh, so there's no binary answer. There's no yes or no. It's really an individualized approach. More than one conversation between a doctor and a patient to figure out, you know, what's right for them. So much to consider, right? Dr. Nadia Kumar, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it.